What's going on, Euroboxers? I'm with Polly, which can only mean one thing. We're most likely talking about Estonia today because she is the biggest fan of Estonia. How are you, Polly? I'm great, thank you. How are you? Doing pretty well. I know that you're really excited to be talking about these songs. Uh, so without further ado, let's talk about Esti Lau. <laughs> So as with the years in the past, there's going to be two semifinals with uh, 12 songs each. Some of those songs will be moving on to the final, which is in early March. Um, this semifinal one, I, I would say, is probably the weaker of the two, but not without its highlights. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, 100%. It is definitely the weakest. Semifinal two, it has a lot of stronger songs in terms of genre, but... There is quite a few in the semi-final I am actually looking forward to seeing, and we do have a lot of familiar faces as well. Yeah, uh, quite a few in, in the selection overall. Uh, so let's get to the very first one. Uh, fans of the Estonian song from 2017 will recognize this face. Let's take a listen. So that's Koit Toma with his song, We Could Have Been Beautiful. Uh, so this, if he were to win this selection, would actually be the third time that he would represent Estonia. And uh, this time he's come around with a, a, quite a strong ballad. Uh, seems to be gathering a lot of attention online. Uh, what do you think about the song that he's bringing? I think he's definitely brought his A game to this selection. I think I was not expecting him to bring a song like this. I was expecting something a lot more like Verona. And he's just brought the most beautiful power ballad and the music video as well tells such a story. I think he's going to do fantastic. Yeah, I think it's pretty clear that, uh, well, I mean, obviously we haven't seen any rehearsals, so anything could change. But uh, in terms of the status that he has, uh, the kind of uh, song that he's bringing and how it, it really has stood out among uh, some of the other ones, maybe not the biggest favorite, but definitely up there. Uh, I would say that it's pretty safe to assume that he's going to qualify so far. Um, and, you know, about the song, it, it is a really solid ballad. Uh, it's quite accessible lyrically as well. It, it's not, uh, you know, you don't really have to go looking too deep for its meaning. And uh, it's done in a way that doesn't feel too cliche. Um, so, yeah, I, I think this is a pretty solid one. Um, if he were to be selected, uh, he's there's also the possibility of another notable uh, Estonian artist from 2017 who's participating in another selection. Uh, how funny would that be? That would just be, I don't even know how to describe it. It'd just be like them two going against each other in like Verona 2.0. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It'd well, be pretty hilarious. And we should mention who we're talking about. We're talking about Lara, who uh, was part of that duet who uh, sung Verona in 2017, and she is uh, competing in neighboring Finland with her song Play. Um, it, it would be really interesting to see this. Uh, again, you know, he's probably not the biggest favorite, so there's possibilities for other things to happen. Uh, but I, I think that this is deserved to be getting the kind of attention that it's getting. Um, so now let's move on to another familiar face from last year, actually. Uh, he brought the song Georgia On My Mind, and this year he's come around with Free Again. Let's listen to Egert Milder. I wanna be free again. So there we have it. Um, so probably not too different from the song that he brought last year in terms of genre, but definitely in terms of feeling, it's it is quite different. It's it's faster. It's got uh, uh, you know a, a different tone to it. And you actually got to speak to to Eggert not too long ago. Yeah, a few weeks ago I caught up with Eggert, and um, as always, it's an absolute pleasure to talk to. And he talked me through sort of the meaning of this song. I asked him whether it sort of reference to the situations we find ourselves in at the moment because it's called free again but he told me that it was actually kind of like a follow-on from georgia that he wanted to be back in georgia and be free again over there so that's got quite an interesting backstory to the song definitely 
Mm -hmm. And uh, even though it, it's, you know, it, it might not be the, the meaning that people assume, it, it could work in, in his favor if people attach the, the meaning of, of, you know, being under the uh, pandemic restrictions that we have right now. A lot of people could resonate with it in that way. And if you can do that as an artist, you give people something that, you know, maybe has your own personal story to it, but other people can attach their own stories to it, that could work quite effectively. Um, but let's talk about Eggert as a performer because he, I think, really surprised people last year. Uh, I was I was definitely rooting from, for him from the beginning, but I don't think people expected his song to have quite an impact until uh, they saw him at the semifinal. What do you remember from that uh, performance? Um, I remember it so vividly. I was in the Golden Circle and obviously Georgia is such a sing-songy song that you can just like bell out at the top of your voice and everyone around me was singing it and then Edgar got up on top of the piano. I almost had a heart attack because you could see the piano like moving and Oof. he actually told me in his interview that the brakes weren't on it or something. Oof. <laughs> <laughs> he was actually moving. <laughs> yes. uh, definitely incorporating some danger into his <laughs> into his performance. Um, so I would say that I I definitely would expect something uh, of. No, I mean again, it's it's a different song, but I think that we can expect uh, a performance with that kind of impact. And if so, I think that this would be a pretty safe qualifier for uh, a, a, you know among these songs in semifinal one. Um, and now let's go to another familiar face, uh, another previous winner of Estilal from 2014. Uh, this is Tanya, and her song this year is called Best Night Ever. Let me take you to your high notes, let the melody flow. This could be the best night. So this is the song that's going to be opening the night, has the very first spot in the running order. Tell me, how do you feel about what Tanya is bringing this year? I think she's definitely stepped it up from Amazing. I really do love her 2014 entry, but this one has such a more feel-good kind of dance sort of value to it. And I think she's really sort of brought her best to SD Lau this year. Yeah, uh, I, as I understand, uh, Tanya is quite well known, I think not only in Estonia, but also possibly in Russia as well, or at least, you know, she's she's made a, an audience for herself in both those countries. And I believe I, I remember hearing Clara, who of course uh, lives in Estonia, saying that she hears that song on the radio from time to time, or, you know, maybe like while she's going out. Uh, so clearly, uh, you know, she she's in a good spot, uh, you know, going into the competition. One thing that I do notice about this song is that it's not too different from two other songs in this selection in, in the sense that it's got that kind of, uh, you know, 80s funk vibe to it. Maybe not exactly like that, but you know, it's, it's a dance song. Um, and the, the two other songs that I'm talking about are Kea uh, Hypnotize, which is, you know, a, a bass infused synth pop song, and uh, Tuli Rand with Uxe. Um, a lot of them kind of have the same vibe, and I'm wondering if uh, perhaps that could work against, well, really all three of them. Maybe they, they might cancel each other out. How do you feel about that possibility? Um, I think Tanya's song is slightly different from the others by the fact that obviously her music video is a lot different as well. So that might play in her favor if she sort of makes the stage in like that as well. Um, but I think definitely people could see those similarities and sort of that might put them off voting for whichever song they dislike out of the three of them because obviously they don't want to see three songs exactly the same in the final. Yeah, and uh, I think at least uh, they're spread out enough in the running order mm -hmm. that hopefully they won't uh, be completely confused together. And, you know, uh, uh, who is it? Uh, Tuli's song is uh, in Estonian, so she has that going for her. Um, but it is one of the things that jumped out to me about how uh, these songs were divided into the semifinal. So it, I guess we'll have to see. Uh, nonetheless, let's move on to someone who may not be a, 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 a very familiar face for the, the, you know, when we're talking about Eurovision and Estilal. However, he was on stage last year with a song that he wrote. It was performed by Udo Sepp, and this year he's come with something completely different. Uh, this is Andre, Andre uh, Zevakin with Pluto. Let's take a listen. <laughs> Yeah. 
So there we have a pretty polished uh, hip hop song. Polly, I would say that for SD Lao, it's it's really rare to see songs that are like this. And in fact, in, as far as the the entries that I've seen over the last few years, I, I would say that I haven't seen anything like this. Tell me a little bit about uh, Andre and Pluto. So yeah, this is definitely a step up for SD Lao in total, to be fair, because we haven't seen any rap songs, what I can remember, that are so current in the sort of music that is in the Estonian music industry at the moment. So what we know about Andre, he obviously um, wrote Udo Sepp's song from last year, but didn't perform with him. And he is also quite a prominent YouTuber in Estonia. And he interviewed some of the SD Lao participants last year. Um, and he's quite known on the radio and stuff like that. Um, Pluto is a pretty um, current and popular rapper in Estonian. He is sort of up and coming in the Estonian music world, so this will be a great platform for him. Yeah, it seems like it. The, the thing that I, I wonder, though, is uh, the assumption with these kinds of selections is that the, the audience is quite uh, varied, and this music tends to definitely appeal more to a younger audience than that of an older one. And, you know, I, I took a bit of time to, to look at the lyrics, the, the translated version of them. And, I mean, you know, the song's called Wingman. It's, it's, it's a song about two bros who are trying to score, and <laughs> they're kind of jabbing at each other. So I really wonder how this is going to come off on stage. Uh, what what do you think about that? I think definitely they're going to need the younger generation to vote for them. I don't think anyone over the age of 30 will really vote for them because obviously <laughs> the lyrics <laughs> won't really apply to them. But I think definitely the younger generation, this is right up their street. Yeah, it is. I, I don't know if I would say as young as 30, because uh, there's certainly lots of people <laughs> over 30 and over 40 and above who can appreciate hip hop music. Uh, whether or not it's going to be the favorite is is another thing. Um, but now let's get to another artist who I know has competed in SD Loud before. I believe the most recent one was 2016. Uh, this is Nika, and let's take a listen to her song. So that song's called Calm Down. Now, I don't know how you feel about this, but I would say of all of the straight up pop entries in this selection, this one seems to have the biggest impact. How do you feel? I think definitely she has stepped it up from, I can't remember what her last song was called. I think it was Knock Knock. And she's definitely brought the cool girl vibe. And I think it's definitely gonna appeal again to the younger generation. And her music video was just so cool. And I think it just reflects the meaning of the song. Yeah, definitely. And and she was really good at uh, exuding a lot of attitude in that video. Um, the the other thing that jumped out at me was that uh, it's it's really sonically distinct from all of the other songs. Uh, you know, it's 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 definitely got that hard uh, beat to it, and it seems like it's tapping into a little bit of gospel, but you know, obviously not really. It's not really like the style of singing that she's applying. Uh, and I also feel like the production gives a lot of space to her voice. So uh, if she really uh, gives it a, a solid vocal performance, then this could do really, really well a, a, as far as I uh, can see. Um, do you do you see this qualifying? I think it will qualify, but I don't think it will be a 100% safe qualifier. I think she will be re relying a lot on the younger audiences to get her through. Potentially, yeah. Uh, I guess, you know, obviously anything anything can happen and we'll just have to see. Um, now let's get to uh, a band. It's one of the few bands in this uh, selection this year. It's another one that you actually got to talk to not too long ago. And they're bringing up a, a true, you know, straight up country song. Uh, let's listen to Viralt. So there we go. That song's called Too Led. Um, I definitely think that this song is going to find its audience. Uh, you, as I mentioned, you spoke to this band not too long ago. Uh, tell me about some of the things that they told you. Yeah, I caught up with Martin, who's one of the guitar players in the band. And um, he actually told me a really funny story about how the rest of the band found out that it was going to be an SD Lau. 
So Martin actually entered their song into SD Lau, but didn't tell the rest of the band until it was broadcast on TV that they had oh. made the semi final. So they was texting him, like, is that really us? <laughs> 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 So that was pretty funny. And honestly, they're such great guys and um, I wish them all the best. And I think they definitely will find their audience. The only thing that concerns me is obviously we had Revals last year in Estila with Kiritan Romani and mm -hmm. they failed to qualify. And I'm really worried that's going to be the same here too. Yeah, I, I, that was the, the band that I was thinking of uh, last year. I mean, again, anything is possible we haven't seen any rehearsals we don't know how they're going to stack up to the rest of them but on first impressions that like that that is kind of what i'm thinking as well um and, and yeah I, I think i think that uh one of the, the things that we talk about when it comes to sd lal is that they they like to bring in a lot of variety so i think that regardless of qualification they at least have a good place in the show for bringing that variety and and you know country fans are real real big fans of of country so i know that there are going to be people really excited to see something like this in the selection uh qualification is probably not uh, a, a guaranteed thing but we wish them all the best um and then in terms of variety uh there's another song here uh, with an artist who comes from a, a bit of a blues rock background uh this is hans naina and his song is called one by one even if the stars came crashing down we'll hold it on our shoulders one by one we all we got this golden So that's one by one. Um, a bit different from the music that uh, he's put out before when we were you know, researching the artists before the songs were released and we were trying to get an idea of what we can expect. Um, and Hans has probably the most interesting story for participating in ST Lala. Tell us about that. So I remember when he was announced to be part of the ST Lala semi-final, he told his story about how he actually came to be in the semi-final and he was actually visiting his girlfriend in Estonia and ended up staying there because of quarantine and the travel restrictions. So he just decided to enter Silao, as you do. Yeah. And he ended up <laughs> in the semi-final. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's fascinating because, I mean, the way that he told it is almost like, yeah, you know, I just tried to, because I, you know, I wanted to, I don't know how much longer I'm going to be here. So, you know, I want to be known as an artist in Estonia. And it was, it was a friend who recommended him to uh, apply to SD Lau. And not only like, is he in the selection, but like, you know, his, his song does stand out. And, and he, I, I mentioned that he has a bit of a blues rock background and this isn't really that, but I think that potentially this could be one of the best vocal performances of the night because he has such a really unique style. And uh, it, it, to me, it, it's got a little bit of like a John Legend vibe to it, the song that he's got. Uh, so I, I think that this is, this is one to watch at least. How do you feel about its uh, potential to qualify? I think he will definitely qualify because like you said, he's got that diversity and it's very different to what we're used to seeing in SD Lau. And um, I think definitely his story will help him qualify as well. We alluded to a number of other ones, but there's two that we haven't mentioned uh, so far. And one I would actually say uh, is bringing a pretty solid song, but it, it really just comes down to whether or not this is going to be like of most interest to the Estonian public. Uh, we've got Ivo Lina, Robert Lina, and Supernova with the song Ma Olen Sin. Um, and uh, Ivo Lina also has some history at Eurovision, who I believe he was the one that represented them in 1996. And uh, the song that they're bringing has that kind of 90s adult contemporary sound, uh, which I really like. Um, and, and he's also quite uh, quite established in, in Estonia. He has the Order of the White Star, which I understand is like a, uh, you know, it's given out by the, the government and uh, it, it really means something. Uh, tell me about your thoughts on their song. I think this one is for the older generation, 100%, because obviously they would have known Ivo Lina in his prime when he was a lot younger and very big in the Estonian music industry. So I think this one's for them, and I think he will get a lot of the older generation votes. Um, I think he will appeal to some of the younger generation as well. Um, I think he will, get, he will definitely qualify, 100%, because of his popularity and his, um, he's a bit of a legend in Estonia. Yeah, it, you know, it, it really is going to come down to uh, whether or not the the other songs that are there can really 
uh, make a huge impact. But I, I mean, yeah, in, in terms of being an established artist, uh, I can see it happening. Um, and then we have Kristen Kelnapenk with the song Find A Way. And this one has quite a laid back lounge uh, jazzy vibe to it, kind of reminding me of Write About Me, Annette and Freddie from last year, which surprised a lot of people. Again, I was, I was a fan from the start, but uh, I don't think people were expecting it to go all the way to the uh, the final round um, in the final because you know there's that second tier when it, they narrow it down to three songs and then it's just the televote who decides. Um, how do you feel about uh, Kristen's song? I'm not the biggest fan of it, but I think definitely she will appeal to the people who were fans of Annette and Freddie. So she will have sort of that jazz following. And it is a very chilled out song, very relaxed. So I think that will also appeal to a lot of people, but I think she may struggle to qualify amongst some of the bigger names. Mm -hmm. I think so long as it's a, a really solid vocal performance, which again, this is the kind of song that really demands that, I, I think that she could at least get a lot of jury support, uh, which you know would be fantastic. And again, it, it would be another thing that brings variety to the final because you know there, there are lots of pop songs, lots of contemporary songs, out of all of 24 of them. Uh, but you know, it's nice to, to have a, a, a final that gives us those moments where we can appreciate something a little bit different. So finally, there's another song here, which is usually something that you can expect from SD Lau. Uh, we've got uh, Carl Killing with his song, Kiss Me, and it's just him on a guitar, kind of sweet, tender ballad. Uh, again, we see this often at, at SD Lau, and it tends to do well as far as I've seen. Um, what do you think about his song? Again, I'm not a massive fan of this one, but definitely it's another one for the younger generation. And I think he'll probably sort of have the same effect as what um, Jagup did last year. He'll sort of appeal to that audience. So I think he'll definitely get those vibes. Yeah, I was thinking a little bit of, of Jagup and also of Inger from last year, yes. uh, who not, not only last year, but the year before was uh, a surprise for a lot of people. And, and I think that there's clearly still interest in that kind of presentation for a song. So uh, provided that it's, it's performed well, I, I think that it still could make it to the next round. Uh, again, not a huge heavyweight, so I, I don't really see it uh, be having the best opportunities, but we'll have to see. So guys, those are our thoughts on the semifinal one songs. There will be another video about semifinal two because you know there's tons of songs in this selection. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to Eurovox. Uh, reach out to us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and leave us a comment about which songs that you'd like to see in the final. Uh, we'll leave it there for now. Thanks so much for tuning in, and we'll see you on the next video. Take care. <laughs>